Hey Insiders, I'm Rachel. I work on search and discovery here at YouTube. And I'm here to answer some of the questions that you've asked about how your videos get recommended. So let's dive in. Okay, so the first question that we got was, if a video is not doing well, do you recommend changing the title or thumbnail? The answer to this is yes, absolutely. Changing the way your title or thumbnail looks is a really effective way to get more views. But in general, we only recommend making changes when your video has both a lower click-through rate and it's receiving fewer views and impressions than usual. When you change your title and thumbnail, you may notice that your video starts getting more or fewer views. And that's generally because your video looks different to viewers, and that's gonna change up the way that people interact with it when it's offered to them in recommendations. Our systems are responding to how viewers are interacting with your video differently, not the act of changing your title and thumbnail. There is no trigger um, if you change your title and thumbnail that will cause our systems to increase or decrease impressions. It's all about the audience. Now we have a question about old subscribers. Does that affect your performance? I think some creators are concerned about, are these videos being shown on the subs feed, which is reducing their click-through rate if those subscribers are inactive? So the answer to this question is that our recommendation system doesn't really focus on the subs feed as a primary signal. In discovery, we focus on how well a video performs in the context it's shown. So ranking on home for a given viewer is mostly based on how a video performs when it is shown on home. So do viewers click watch and enjoy the video when it's offered to them on their homepage? And those surfaces like home understand which viewers haven't watched your channel in a long time and will avoid showing your video to inactive subscribers who are really unlikely to watch. So don't worry about it. The next question we get is about search rank. How is it determined? Um, so the example here is if you have a video game, someone types in the name of that video game, how are the results ranked? So just like Google search engine, Search on YouTube has a similar goal where we want to show the viewer the most relevant uh, results for their search query. And videos are ranked on search based on a lot of factors, but mostly relevance and performance. So relevance is how well your title, description, and the content of your video match the viewer's query. And performance is which videos that viewers chose to watch and other engagement metrics like how long and how much of the video that viewers watched. Search is not a list of results of the most viewed videos for a given query. It's very much the most relevant um, and the videos we think you're most likely to watch. So I hope that helps. In this question, uh, this is actually a feature request. This is a creator who wants to see, do users return to my channel even after a long time has passed? Really wanting to see those statistics. So good news, we are just about to launch returning viewers and analytics, which for a given channel, you can then see how many new viewers are discovering your channel and how many are returning. In this particular case, uh, a viewer will be counted as new if they haven't watched your channel in over a year. The reason uh, that we made that decision is it is very rare for that to happen. The next question we got was about subs count. Why is it relevant if YouTube doesn't push out all content your subscribers, um, which may be based on their inactivity or lack of engagement to the channel? Uh, shouldn't we be having videos pushed out to someone unless they unsubscribe? So this is a good question. Our recommendation system doesn't actually push out viewers to anyone but actually finds or pulls in videos and ranks them for viewers when they visit YouTube based on what we think they're most likely to watch. Now subscriptions is one of many signals that we use to inform that ranking. And we did actually run experiments where we prioritize videos from subscriptions um, above all recommendations from all other channels. But in all of those experiments, it did dramatically reduce how much viewers watched and how often they came back to YouTube. So for that reason, we really focus recommendations on videos that viewers are most likely to watch and enjoy while subscriptions are used to inform that, the data shows it's not always the most highly predictive factor about which videos people want. And so uh, for viewers that do want to focus on subscriptions, we have the subscriptions tab. So this creator is talking about um, the notifications limit. So if you upload more than three videos in a given day, um, there won't be notifications sent. And the question is, does scheduling a video as unlisted or setting it private then setting it public later going to impact my performance? The answer is no. What matters is how viewers respond to your video after it's been published. That's what our recommendation system is learning from. So if you set a video as scheduled or unlisted, you flip it public later on, no impact. Don't worry about it. So this question is about uploading videos in two different languages. Does that hurt your channel performance or how it's recommended on YouTube? So this question is interesting. I have seen some creators do this. Uploading in two different languages can sometimes confuse your viewers unless your audience is mostly multilingual and they can enjoy videos in both languages. 
We often recommend spinning off into multiple channels per language if you're catering to your audience. You can imagine if you're subscribed to a channel and you're seeing videos that are, for example, in German and English, but you only speak one of them, you're going to ignore the uh, one that is not in your native language. And so design around your audience. If you have a mostly multilingual audience, then keep your channel that way. If your channel is designed around a specific type of viewer, probably we recommend separating them or spinning them off. This creator wanted to know, does it take a certain amount of hours of watch time before a video can be recommended? One of my most successful videos didn't take off for three months, and then it rapidly picked up steam. So there's actually two sections of this. I'll start with the first one. There's no particular threshold that a video needs to meet to start getting recommended. The second is that it's really common for viewers to start showing interest sometimes in old videos. A lot of viewers don't watch videos in chronological order or decide what they want to watch based on when a video is published. If you go to your homepage today, you might notice that a lot of those videos were published weeks, months, sometimes even years ago. And if viewers start showing more interest in an older video, it could be that the topic that your video is about is increasing in popularity, a bunch of new people discovered your channel and they're going back and watching more, or a few other reasons. And so it's completely normal and actually fairly common. So that's all the questions that we have time for today. Please leave more in the comments if you have questions about how our recommendation system works or impact on your own performance. We're always here to answer them, so drop a comment down below. So keep it real, and thanks for watching.